Hi, my name is Jan and I build custom 3D printed keyboards. In the last video I showed you how to build a 3D printed macro pad and now we're going to make it compatible with VIA and VIO. I have made another version of the case for MX switches which should be a bit cleaner overall with the switches hidden and a slightly adjusted key spacing. Because we didn't solder anything the last time it was super simple to set this thing up with the same components we used in the last build. I just printed a new case and clicked the hotswap sockets in. Download links are in the description below. These apps make it possible to change the key map of your board without flashing a new firmware. Nice. This saves a lot of time when tinkering with keyboard layouts, and it's very convenient with macro pads to quickly switch shortcuts. Even though we are adding both to our macro pad, let's highlight some differences first. VIA has a key map tester which is very convenient for checking if your wiring is fine, with visual and sound feedback. This is not implemented in Vial yet. VIA also has a very nice RGB feature set. Vial is still working on an RGB supported version, but you can already download this right now. Vial has the huge benefit of being open source and also allows the config to be stored on the keyboard without merging it to the Git repo, which saves time on the approval process and also doesn't make you dependent on another vendor for your builds. It also has support for rotary encoders, but I haven't played around with that yet. But there are some adjustments that you need to make in the firmware for this to work. Let's set up the build environment first. Last time I made the guide for macOS, so now we will do this on Windows. Here we install the QMK CLI with the QMK MSYS bundle. It's overall a bit simpler to use with Windows Subsystem for Linux, but might not be supported on all machines. Maybe sometime. As WSL2 needs virtualization to be enabled on your machine. For some reason the installation is quite slow, but I think this is because they need to bundle the whole terminal and git stuff as well. For the whole git thing to work, create an SSH key with SSH keygen and add this to your GitHub account. If we don't add access control, we will not be able to clone the repository with its submodules. You can find this in github.com, settings, SSH keys, and then add new. Name your PC and paste the SSH key you generated. Then you can clone the vile QMK fork repository as vile support is not yet merged to QMK. There's a make command to also pull the submodules. This is needed as well. Then we can initialize QMK with the vial folder as its home folder. Then we paste the keyboard config files into our keyboard folder and try compiling the default firmware to see if our setup works. Now for configuring via support, we need to add information about the physical keyboard layout. You can use keyboardlayouteditor.com. Add all the keys of your keyboard and name them with a label on the top legend by their position on the matrix. First the row number, then the column, starting with the zero. Copy the JSON data from the raw data tab and paste it into the template under the layout's key map key. We then generate the UID for the keyboard with this Python command and add it to the config.h. We will also add a vial unlock combo. You can disable this, but it basically is an option so you can accidentally flash a new firmware without unlocking the keyboard first. You don't need to unlock the board for remapping keys, so just set them to some combination of keys in your matrix. Also add a name for your keyboard that will be displayed in the vial interface. Then copy the vendor ID and product ID from the config.h in the main keyboard folder and adjust the size of the matrix to fit your board, in this case two rows and three columns. We then add a new key map folder for VIA. The key map you set here is what your keyboard will load with initially. You can have as many layers as QMK supports, but you need to create the layers here for them to be editable in VIA. If you want to have space for layers you want to add in the future, just fill them with transparent keys here. Then we need to enable VIA and VIAL support in the rules.mk. Now we can compile the firmware and flash it with the QMK toolbox, where we select the .hex file we just generated, then connect the reset pin to ground on our connected microcontroller and press flash. On some microcontrollers you might need to try a few times for it to be detected. To use your board in VIA, you just need to enable the design tab in the settings and load the vial JSON of your keyboard. Then everything is ready to use, but you need to reload this JSON file every time you start the app. For vial, you just need to start the app and it will load the configuration from the keyboard. And you can still use both of them at the same time. If you used the same wiring as I did on the macro pad, you can download the hex file for it right here. And just modify the key map with vial. And yes, it will keep the settings when you plug it into a different PC. Configuring your board with Vial is especially handy for a macro pad as you can remap your hotkeys for video editing or microphone mute buttons without flashing the firmware. 
Via and Vial also allows you to export and import layouts, so you can quickly change multiple layers on bigger boards depending on your use case. For someone like me who likes to tinker a lot with the keyboard layouts, using Vial is now an essential part for the keyboard prototyping process. I will add hex files with Vial support for my keyboard designs in the future, as now the keymap can be changed with a simple app instead of having to set up the whole build environment first. For people that just want to build the keyboard exactly the same way I did. At least in Windows, this still requires some effort. At least when WSL isn't set up on the machine yet. After finishing the macro pad, I also updated the firmware for my Plank keyboard. This was a super seamless process, and I was experimenting a lot with key placements in the spacebar area. This helped a lot with testing a few configurations in a short amount of time. Now changing the configuration happens instantly and also shows me the current key map in a visual tool. Also, thanks Vial for this amazing open source project. This gets us some simple and accessible tool for configuring our boards while staying completely independent from other online services or even pull request approvals like the QMK configurator or the VIA project. Downloads for the firmware source and hex as well as the 3D printed macro board STL files are linked in the description. Did you already use these tools or ported a board to support it? If not, what's holding you back? Currently, I can't find any reason not to use it. So get into the discussion in the comments or even join my Discord server if you're interested in custom keyboard builds. Thanks for watching and see you in the next build.